Hi and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day today and you're about a week into the new year. Hopefully it's going well so far. This video is going to show you how I went about making some wind chimes which were featured on my cottage projects. So I'll put a little picture right over here for you to see. But this is one of those things where some people in my group asked if I could show them how I made them. So this video is going to show you step by step how to create these lovely little whimsical things. And the fun thing about these chimes is that if for some reason you're also here because you're looking for fairy garden accessories, this is something that should hold up for you outside for a little while at least. Can't promise, you know, full throttle years upon years, but it's definitely a fun little project that'll add a little whimsy to whatever it is you want to add them to. So sit tight, take a look, and if any questions, please just ask me down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Don't forget, if you want to come and find me, I have a Facebook group now. I am more than happy to see people join and add in some posts of what they're working on as well. So you can come and find me there. I'll put the link in the description as well. Everything else, you can also reach me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. So that's it for now. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye. Before getting started, I want to show you, first of all, two of these things I have for supplies. The first is this bead package that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm using a couple of beads from this packaging, and it's actually really handy, and there's some different options you can do with it as well. So if you find that one at your Dollar Tree, snag it. If you can't find it, I'm sure you can find similar shaped beads at your jewelry supply area in, say, Michael's or Joann's or even at Walmart. The second thing are these clamps, which, again, you want to make sure you get the size as noted in the picture. That is going to come in handy for keeping certain things in place. After that, what you want to get supply-wise is some thin florist wire or thicker jewelry wire, four-hole small metal button, black coat thread. Now, coat thread is different than standard thread. It's thicker and it has a heavier weight to it. It's also stronger and it is labeled on the spool, so keep an eye out for that. You're going to want an earring hook and then two to three bead wires with looped ends, small crystal bead, super glue, scissors, and a jewelry wire tool. That's one of those deals that'll help you either curl the wire or snip the wire. And again, find that in the jewelry section. So those are the supplies you need. Let's get started with the step-by-steps. To first get started, what you're going to want to have on hand are two lengths of coat thread, and you want to have that length be about eight inches long for each one. The more length you have, the easier it will be to work with this, so keep that in mind. You're also going to want that two to three inch looped bead wire. It helps to have a couple extra of these just in case something goes wrong with the first one, say it gets bent or it's not working out as you had hoped. So make sure you have a couple on hand as extras just in case. And finally, you want that metal four hole button. So what you first do is thread those two two lengths of thread through the loop in the bead wire. Once you have that done, you're then going to move over to the button and start threading the thread through the buttonholes. What you want to make sure you're doing, however, is that for each length, you're working on the diagonal holes from each other. So one side of the length of the thread will go in one hole, then you move over to the diagonal hole of the button and thread in the other side of that length. Once you get all four lengths through, you're going to then make a small knot at the top of the button just to keep everything secure. You don't want to make it too tight. You want to make sure that wire does dangle around a little bit when you hold that up by the threads. Now that you have that attached to the button, what you're going to move on to is adding the clapper, which is going to be just one of those small round beads onto the bead wire. So you're going to first thread on the bead itself, and then you're going to want one of those clamp pieces to go underneath it. Now what you're going to do with that clamp piece is you're going to flatten that out using the tool that I was mentioning before. So you see how this tool has the part where you can cut it at the base and then you have these rounded out bits at the top. You're going to take the top part of this tool and you're going to carefully nip down the clamp till it's as flat as you can get it against the wire. What I then did is fold it over on itself so it has more of a slimmer profile as opposed to sticking out on the side like it is in that first picture. And that's the way the bead is going to set into place for the clapper to the chimes. Then what you can do is use a random bead. I just had this small crystal bead that I used. You can use other things that are similar in shape or size, and you're going to add that on. Once you get that onto the wire, what you want to do is take that jewelry tool and you are going to curl the end of that wire so you have a little loop there. After you get the loop, what you want to do with that loop is take the tool again and turn the loop so it's at a 90 degree angle and it sort of hides itself a little bit more underneath the bottom of the bead. And that's basically how you're going to create the center point of your chimes for the clapper and the wind catcher. So let's move on to the next step now.
Now we're gonna move on to adding on the tube and tube strings for the chimes. Now you probably saw in the earlier photos the curved over bits of wire. I realized after the fact the parts that I showed you before are a lot easier without those wires in the way. So we're gonna move on to adding in the wires which are gonna turn into the tube strings for your chimes. Now because I had the florist wire on hand, that is what I used. However, you can get silver jewelry wire that is about the same gauge as this florist wire and it'll help you skip a part towards the end. So in this case, I'm just using my my green florist wire what you want to do is cut a length about eight inches long just like you did with the string and you're gonna fold it over so it almost looks like a bobby pin and then what you need to do is thread the wire into two holes of your buttons but in this case a top and bottom hole not a diagonal arrangement once you get your two lengths in what you're then going to do is pick up the tube shaped beads out of that packet I showed you from Dollar Tree and you're going to thread a tube on to each length of wire when you thread this on, you want to make sure that that bead sits about where the clapper part or that round bead, the smaller one, sits on the central post of your chimes. When you get your beads in place, you will then take some super glue and at the top and bottom of each bead, put in a little dab of super glue to help hold those securely in place. Once that super glue has dried completely, then go back with your jewelry tool and you're going to use the snipping end of it and cut off the excess length of wire. And that's going to give you your tubes for your chimes. So that's taken care of. Let's keep going. To add a couple finishing points before we move on to making the hook for these chimes, what I did with the super glue is put a little dab at the top knot of the strings. So you want to make sure this doesn't go down into the base area of your chimes because you don't want that glue to make the wires stick to the button. So very carefully put that dab of glue on just the knot of the strings. The other thing I had to do because I only had the green florist wire is I took my very bright silver metal acrylic paint and I painted it onto the wire both on the strands where the tubes are as well as the top of the button where you'll see that little bit of green poking out at the top. So those are just a couple points I did before moving on to making the hook for the chimes. To make the hook to hang these chimes, you're first going to want an earring hook. And as you can see here, this one has some nice detailing of a bead and some wraparound coil work, which I decided to keep on just for some interest. What you want to do is take your jewelry tool and clip off a good length of the earring post because you don't need that there. You just want to turn this into a smaller hook. Once you have that done, you're then going to move on to just taking a scrap piece of foam core. Uh, you can get that at Dollar Tree. And I just cut out a small rectangular shape and I then took my knife and I detailed it so it would have this wood grain look to it. Once you have that done, you're going to insert a very small slit into that piece of foam and insert the loop section of the earring hook into the foam and glue it in with some tacky glue. I wouldn't recommend doing hot glue in this case because the metal of the earring hook will cool it so quickly it doesn't really attach itself as well as it does with the tacky glue. Once you have that glued, I then did a base coat of just a dark mix of dark brown, black, and Mod Podge, painted it up, let it dry completely. For the foam, what I then did is paint it over with a nutmeg brown. When that dried, I did some dry brushing with just a medium brown, both from Craft Smart and Apple Barrel. And then for the hook itself, I just took my bronze metallic paint and painted the hook with the bronze metallic paint. So that's how I created the hook for the chime set. Once you have your hook and your chimes all ready, the last few things you need to do is first cut off the excess length of thread at the top area where that knot was and you secured with super glue, and then figure out what you want to hang them on. So in this case, I put these up onto the sample wall that I made with the hot glue stones and the fresco walls. Uh, that little bit of blue you're seeing is some sticky tack I used just to keep everything in place because I didn't want them set there permanently. But you can see here that between the hook and the looping of the chimes, you get this nice dangling effect off the wall. And it's one of those things where with chimes, you can vary the length on this to change the size a little bit. You can make the clap a little bit bigger. You can make the wind catcher part of the chimes a little bit smaller. I did put a mini in there for scale so you could see. And yes, there are chimes that can get to be quite tall. I have a set of chimes myself. They're about as tall as I am almost. 
But in this case, I hope you enjoyed finding something a little bit more whimsical to add to your terrain pieces. This is one of those things where it was highly requested from the Cottage Project, and I'm very happy to show you how I went about making these. So any questions, please feel free to ask me below or shoot me an email at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Is there going to be a what? Like a funny thing at the end. Is there going to be a funny thing at the end? Uh-huh. You want there to be bloopers? Uh-huh. Well, I can tell you right now, this will be a blooper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do, do, do. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> you going to let me do this today or no? Mm hmm? Huh? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Don't! Touch the... Oh! You ruined the camera. Oh, you can't film anymore. Icky. Make everything all icky blurry. Icky. 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 Like poison icky? No, like mucked up sticky icky. Icky. Okay. okay. Like gum. Yeah, kind of like gum. Are you going to get on this too? Hello. <laughs> Hello world. Hello world. All right, go go there so mommy can film and then, oh, then I'm done. Bye. Thank you. Alright, ready? You guys need to be no speaking or anything. Can you do that? I'm gonna start. Understand? Yeah? Okay.